In this video, we'll be implementing Bloom filters to actually reduce the net, uh, number of database calls um, and get this Bloom filter working. So I, I actually have a video of uh, the working of Bloom filters and uh, how does that actually work under the hood. Um, you can watch that. I have the link in my description. Um, so first things first, I want to just say what I'm going to use for this, um, um, let's say this app. So first thing I will be using Node.js. Uh, and for database I will be using MySQL so this is, go this is going to be a very simple uh, application just one file uh, index.js will be working on that and uh, nothing other than that so first to so first let's get started I have created a new folder called bloom and uh, I have created a new folder bloom and I'm into in that folder now so first uh, you can see that um, the folder is empty and I want to create uh, I, I would just initialize npm here so I just put on enter for everything and uh, if you see we have a package.json so I would be needing um, I would be installing three packages so express redis and mysql so these are the three packages that I would be um, using so the packages are installed and uh, if we see the package.json we would be having these three packages here so first we know that uh, Express and MySQL are uh, the main packages and I am using Redis in this case to um, use Bloom filters because you know we can't store that is as an in-memory array because whenever we restart the server the array gets uh, empty again. So I would be using some persistence, so I would be needing some persistence so I want uh, Redis as a cache mechanism. Before even uh, getting started with this application, I actually want to create the tables and also uh, create a database for uh, uh, this Bloom filter because you know we uh, that's a sample database. Just uh, 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 some users and uh, just uh, we want to just simulate everything what's happening uh, that we have talked about in the previous video. So in order to do that, you have to actually uh, go into the SQL console and then create databases there. So I can do that by using MySQL dot server start so you can see that uh, okay so the mysql server has started here and this is um, this is to be noted that you have to have mysql installed before even starting that so i can now go into the mysql console using mysql dash u root dash p and it will ask you for the password so after you enter the password you can go in and actually you have to create a database first of all before you even creating a table so I will create a database named Bloom, let's say in this case. So I have created a database. So I want to use that database and I'll be doing Bloom, use Bloom. So now we are inside Bloom and whatever table we create, we are creating inside Bloom database. So first I want to create a very simple table. So that's create table. I want to give the table name as users, which has uh, properties such as username, which is a varchar of let's say 32 bit max and uh, let's say age which is an integer that's it so i have uh, this created this user users table you can actually verify that by using saying uh, describe users and you can see that we get um, the structure of our table So now back here in, in this application, I would create a file dot file named index.js and I would start uh, writing code in that file. This is the only file I would be using. So first I would say I would actually like to define what what are the roots that I want, what what I actually want to do. So first thing is that uh, let me um, write a comment here. So first thing is that uh, I want to create uh, a root like this slash um, let's say slash um, username slash age what this will do is insert um, the or create a row in in the table in users table with given values okay so this is a root I would be given I will be uh, dynamically giving username and age and that would create a user for me so that's one thing and the other thing is that I would do slash um, actually this is a post request okay this is a post request 
and I also want to do a get request. I need a get request to slash username, and this is the main uh, thing where we'll be getting the username uh, by the things uh, by the name supplied here. So this would uh, return the user with uh, the given username. So those are the two routes I want to do, and uh, I would be talking uh, how we are going to use Bloom filters in this. The first thing I want to do here is uh, uh, require express and uh, other libraries. So I'll do express is equals to require express, and I would create an instance of app by doing like this. So and we have installed other libraries right so i want to uh, require those libraries also so i will have uh, installed mysql and uh, i have also installed uh, redis okay so we have imported this and before starting up we have to actually set up mysql so that uh, whatever queries we are doing it goes to this table so okay so to do that actually we can um, do my mysql dot create connection and we can send an object inside that um, you know you know in order to um, give the properties uh, which we want to use so it takes actually three properties which is a host so we are using localhost right now so it's localhost and and the user which is right now it's root um, and uh, the uh, password my password is actually password this can be anything in your case so this is actually quite sensitive and you can use environment variables to hide these things so this is a simple application so I'm just uh, using plain strings so next thing is a uh, uh, database uh, you remember we have created the database with name bloom so this I want to actually store this in a variable so I would say const connection Oops. I store that in a variable and then we can do connection dot create connection so this is all we need to set up SQL so the next two two things are uh, these routes which we talked about uh, so let's create the first route here so which was, which is a post route so I would do app dot post slash username slash age and we get request and response um, as a callback here and you can actually um, destructure these things username and age from we can access this actually from request dot params we are destructuring so we just plainly put request dot params so we have destructured these uh, our username and age and next thing I want to do is insert these things into uh, the table so we can use this connection variable to actually make a query so we can do connection dot query and we can write the query here so the query that I want to write is uh, actually insert into users and the values are uh, question mark and question mark so this is to uh, you know protect the from product from uh, attacks so we can use this question marks and then we can uh, give these values in an array after that so the first one is the username and the second one is the age so after this would be a callback with error and results or result and what I want to do is this if there is some, no error then I want to do something or else there is some error I would just uh, just not send that error okay, let me save that until now we have uh, what we are doing is that we are doing simple ins insert query right so the thing uh, that uh, is very important and to note here is that while inserting um, what I want to do is I actually want to use a bloom filter so before even using the bloom filter I actually want to set or uh, define what is a bloom filter in this case so we have to use the variable redis here so it's uh, bloom filter is uh, just nothing except that um, it's a redis client okay you can do blue const bloom filter is equals to redis dot create client so that would create a client for you and uh, you can use bloom filter to set and get uh, things and now what I want to do is I want to use this bloom filter to uh, after I um, you know if there is no error I just want to use the bloom filter to uh, create a hash function 
and get an index back from the hash function and set the value of index to true okay so i think you may have uh, you may recall from the previous video or if you if you know what a bloom filter is so uh, you, you know um, we have to set the index that is being returned from the hash function so what i want to do is before even um, you know um, trying to set the index we have to create a hash function so i am going to create a prototype inside string so let me tell you what that is so let me um, paste that here so here it is here is a uh, this is a very basic hash function so you can see that i have used the variable pro, um, name prototype and that i have attached that to string so what this basically means that is that uh, you know you can do if you have some string like this then you can do dot then if you do hash function you will actually you will you will be getting the index uh, or the value of that hash function you can also notice that I am doing um, hash mod 64 because I am using 64 bit uh, bloom filter in this case. So that's set. So what I want to do now is that uh, I want to first get the index from the hash function. So I would say const index is equals to um, I would say the username username dot because username is a string we have access to this hash function uh, method or function. I would say um, username dot hash function. So this index is a hash, um, or we can say it uh, uniquely represents that string. Now what I want to do is I want to say bloom filter dot set set this index to one. So that's what I'm doing. And you can rest dot send. You can just say um, user added. So let me repeat again. What we are doing is just three basic steps here. First one is that we are creating a we created a hash function, and we are using that hash function to create an index. And next is that we are setting we are setting the you know we have talked about setting bits. So that's what we are doing here. We are just uh, uh, setting the bit of that index to one, and after that we are just uh, returning back the response. So we have finished this uh, post or creating a user in the table thing. And we need the final route which uh, we can give the username and it returns um, if the user is present or not. So let's create that route first. And we can use this as a get route. I would use app dot get um, slash username. Uh, let me bring this up. And request and response as a callback. And first thing I want to do is destructure the username. Um, username is equals to request dot params and now what I want to do is I want to check if this username already exists in um, in the bloom filter um, using the hash function uh, if it is not present we can be 100% sure that this user is not in the database also so I would just return back that the user is not present else we would just um, get back the user from the database and we can just return it back to the client so before even hitting the bloom filter we have we actually have to get the index from the hash function so we can do that using uh, index is equals to username so this username is a string so it has access to the hash function and we can do that like that and now we can check if this um, this um, exists in uh, the bloom filter so actually we can check um, the redis bloom filter using uh, the exist function so this it goes like this bloom filter dot exist index so this index if it exists actually it's a callback so we get an error and let's say ok we get a callback from the from the exist function and what if there is no error or if there is some error we can just do the error which in just repeat in the error back so if there is no error then i want to check if if it is not okay so if does not exist what i want to do is i want to return just dot send i would say user doesn't exist or uh, else actually i can query the database and uh, give that give that back to the client so i can do that using um, the connection variable which we have defined before and again we can do query and that query would be select star from um, users where, oops, where username 
is equal to question mark and we can fill that here so that's username and we we'll get the error and the result back and we can just return rest dot also send result of zero because it comes in a form of array with one element so I just want to return the first element so okay so that now that the application is complete we can now test this actually so before even testing I, testing I want to check this by using the console.log here um, you can say querying database just make sure that it's querying the database in order to notice if that exists or not again we can we can restart the server so the first thing I want to do is I want to create a user so I can do the po I, I can send a post request with uh, name let's say on a Sri Ram slash the age which is 21 and I would click the send and we can see that the user is added here and let's add another user let's say John send that and again the user is added and now we can start sending the get request to see if the user exists or not so let's query for John if he really exists or not okay we can we are getting back the response and if we check this we can see that it's um, let me zoom back in it's querying the database here so it, it has hit the database to get the information so now that's actually the what has to happen now if we query something or some user who does not exist in the database let's see what happens and we get that the user does not exist and which is true because we have not created the user chain and you can see that we are not even querying the database so this is a this is the one for John but for Jane we have not even queried the database but we got the correct and exact result and this would be true for exactly true for any um, string who is not or any user who is not present um, back in the database so you can see that it is not even querying the database so yeah this is how the bloom filter works and this is how um, you know the network calls or the query queries for databases are uh, vastly and vastly reduced uh, to a greater extent and this is the working implementation of bloom filter and if you like this video please like share and do subscribe thank you